so today we'll be talking about the evolution of human genome and before uh, discussing in detail about human genome i just want to because the basics are quite clear but um, before that i want to give you a more classic understanding of um, the human genomic studies what all was uh, you know what kind of approach was there to study human genome and in the more contemporary times how well do you see human genome studies being applied to uh, at the population level so that is what we are going to discuss in this paper um, i have taken up this paper because it's quite recent and it's quite comprehensive in giving you broader understanding of lot many factors that have been affecting human genome and how do we consider all these factors affecting human genome as uh, you know a parameter of uh, uh, studying the evolutionary course of human genome right so that is the idea behind using this paper and the importance of human genome you know um, has has lot many um, perspectives to it like uh, initially we started or the you know scholars started working on knowing the pathways delineating the framework of human genome the sequences the basic understanding of human genome right over the period of time when we got to know about evolutionary forces the factors um, responsible for uh, and you know the changes of the human genome under these evolutionary forces and their confounding factors with other uh, you know environmental causation ya fir biocultural adaptation ecological frameworks all of these were gradually being summed up as one of the important aspect to look for when you study the human genome studies furthermore um, at the level of uh, you know the gene gene mechanisms and gene expressions or say at the uh, level of chemical modifications within the um, dna and um, you know um, how the phenotypic expressions within species which are very closely related were uh, associated in the evolutionary pathway uh, when we study the entire you know history of human origins so to say their association their deviation in terms of human genomes is how you study the evolution as well so the evolution um, at the macro picture gives you a parallel with the um, you know archaeological understanding or the human origins so to say over the you know hominins hominoids um, great apes and human like apes and all of them coming all together in 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 one broader bracket of the macro evolution picture and the parallels being drawn at the micro level of how genomic sequencing or um, you know uh, at the at the micro picture of genome and the genes how those things were changing with respect to those macro picture of evolution okay so that is how you going to draw that analogy and uh, that that gives you a more classic understanding and in terms of more contemporary understanding as i was talking it's more applied form like we are studying how uh, at the uh, population level let's say a given morbid condition is having a genetic predisposition to it and how you draw that association is it because of the genomic um, uh, expression that it that we are having certain phenotypic expression in terms of a morbid condition in terms of a disease or you know an illness or a chronic illness you know at least or is it because of some um, uh, so to say chemical modification that are happening within the um, dna is it because of that or along with both of these there are other confounding factors such as environmental pressures the environmental change is it because of that so all together when you take these three pathways these three uh, factors if you take them individually definitely there will be a question mark at the end if you take one of them and you uh, simply study cause and effect sort of relation with respect to genomic expressions and then the phenotypic expression probably that is going to give you cause and effect but would definitely leave you with a question mark 
on the other hand if you take them as confounders gene expressions the you know um, histone modifications methylation acetylation all of them going all together along with the environmental pressures being studied uh, in that context will give you a broader understanding of why a disease related outcome was observed right apart from that uh, like i talked about the human genome projects we'll be discussing in the subsequent classes when these genome projects are also in a way generating a database um a specific to one population specific to the other the database at, at a macro picture is being generated in which you have this entire sequence of the genes and if there is a rare disease outcome if, if there is a rare situation of any phenotypic expression that you can correlate with the understanding from those database being generated across populations so you know starting from really understanding the pathways to now having a more macro database or a macro modeled uh, macro genetic modeling of the populations to to also generate the um, you know um, curative and preventive perspectives of any disease related outcome is how you understand the contemporary relevance of genomic studies right um so yeah as it says uh, as the article says it it studying the evolutionary and the demographic history of a species has a great promise to reveal how and why the modern humans get sick the human genome has been shaped by evolutionary pressures in many cases that no longer reflect the circumstances of most humans and this mismatch between our genes and our environment can also lead to the diseases right so in a way attributing the cause of the uh, you know changes in the sequence of human genome or changes in the human genome per se that has led to specific outcome in terms of disease or health related condition or anyhow so that that's attributed also to the mismatch between the genes and the environment furthermore um, the progress since the sequencing of first human genome for more than 10 years now there's still much we do not understand about the evolution of human genome or many things are still you know as a question mark the pathway is still the associations are still a big question mark also because of dearth of literature um, very lot many studies are being conducted but still that is not sufficient enough needs to be done in terms of applications of these genomic studies would definitely include the dynamics of the events of selection across human populations and its closely related species then the determinants of variations in mutation rates per se across different genes spread out across different populations then also drawing inferences from ancient human population histories including the archaic hominins so to say their uh, sequencing is being done of neanderthals or um hominins and their uh, you know understanding of their genomic sequencing also gives an understanding of where we deviated how different is the contemporary human genome from those archaic humans genome so that that gives a you know broader understanding of what all changes have been there what led to these changes right so this is how we study the the, the course of evolution of human genome now there are different factors that uh, this article is going to highlight in reference to the genetic factors environmental factors and the demographic factors so firstly it talks about the gene regulatory processes and how do they influence the genetic evolution the genomic evolution in human beings so there were different scholars a long time back when you know we were advancing with the you know there was a initial phase of advancements of technologies and medical genetics or human genetics per se that time uh, you know lot of phenotypic expressions were studied and the immediate association drawn was with the gene regulatory mechanisms that brought out the changes in the phenotypic expressions especially in those species which were very closely related 
um, so uh, you know evidences were being generated in terms of promoters inhibitors and enhancers in these cis regulatory elements which have uh, direct relevance in um, you know disease related events disease related outcomes so mapping different expressions of genes mapping the binding sites of the transcription factors histone modifications or all of them in having different you know expressions in different tissues across different species have also revealed that these uh, cis regulatory elements although like comparing within them within different uh, gene regulatory uh, uh, mechanisms the cres were attributed to like having higher association with the phenotypic expressions or the phenotypic differences across closely related species but apart from that these histone modifications which will be covering in the next next title which is in the chemical modifications so all these uh, gene expressions gene regulatory mechanisms have been a very significant uh, actor in promoting the genomic evolution in human genomes and in the entire course of human evolution per se for example they say a recent study of liver promoters and enhancers across 20 mammalian species was found and it stated that uh, 25% of species enhancers and 10% of its promoters were unique even when the underlying sequence was deeply conserved and similar results were also drawn from the comparative study of humans macaques and the mouse so cres are something which are attributed to these phenotypic differences uh, in similarly in in similar closely related species apart from the cri cres there are also transposable elements which reprogram the gene regulatory networks uh, in different events of human development per se and they are different from for, for uh, mammals compared to humans right so so this understanding is these dynamics are how you uh, try to um, you know attribute the human genomic evolution to cres and transposable elements then other regulatory gene regulatory mechanisms moreover some of the mechanisms in um, expression of gene for example and there are natural selection there are other evolutionary forces acting upon so expression of a gene in some situation could be completely negated in some it could be uh, negated as in it could be completely hidden in some cases it could be uh, you know um, reduced down while in some cases it could be further amplified increased enhanced so these factors affecting the amplification of the reduction of their expressions also needs to be furthermore delineated you need to understand more in detail about those mechanisms also we know about the genetic pathways we know about certain elements we are quite aware of how the gene regulatory mechanisms work but what exactly is um, capping their mechanism also needs to be delineated further so this is one of the very important factor uh, that that the article is trying to bring here apart from that they are also suggesting some measures that could be taken at this point where we have the advanced technology we have uh, advanced sequencing of dna and genomic understanding so at this level we can uh, have more integrated genome wide mapping of these tf binding sites or cres or these expressions with all these latest technologies to determine the conformation of uh, you know the uh, makeup of dna which would further provide a framework for modeling the uh, gene regulation and the further frameworks of genomic evolution the next um, factor that they are trying to bring here is the role of chemical modifications of dna and histone modifications the process of acetylation methylation how all of these have been acting as a constraint on or you know have been promoting sort of um in promoting the um, human genomic evolution so lot many researchers you know in psychological research or 
साइकोलॉजिकल एंड साइकोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजिकल रिसर्च ह्यूमन जेनेटिक्स रिसर्च दे हैव बीन ब्रिगिंग आउट द रोल ऑफ दीज मिथाइलेशन एसिटाइलेशन इन द ओवरऑल एक्सप्रेशन एट द लेवल ऑफ फिनोटाइप राइट देयर रोल इज बीन यू नो स्टडेड एट द लेवल ऑफ रिसर्च but along with that it is very important to understand that these modifications are they hereditary in nature the nature of if if yeah they do say that they are hereditary in nature but what is the exact pattern of inheritance that they are you know studied under that is one major question which is still not revealed or not still under observation still under research um now this article basically uh, highlights that the role of dna methylation has been very high, you know higher or say positive um, in bringing out sequence variation and the promoter methylation changes however even in presence of deep sequence conservation many sites show differential modifications similarly like when you are studying disease related outcome if you are only going by the understanding of methylation acetylation and you are completely negating the role of uh, um, gene regulatory framework gene expressions and everything like that probably you are going to be left with a question mark or it would not be a, a sufficient observation at, at, at a research level so that comes as a confounder again right understanding the evolution of these modifications help would help us resolve few of the debates about whether there are specific modifications are they casual are they also affected by you know uh, other regulatory uh, framework gene regulatory framework so to say so those confounding factors that mechanism also needs to be brought out in a more enhanced manner although a lot of research do say that these sites are bringing out are are quite evidently responsible in bringing the evolutionary change the next factor that is regarding the mutational biases along the human genome this is the next factor is regarding the mutational biases along the human genome are they having any cause and effect directly associated with the evolution of human genome so yes the article says there is a considerable variation in the rate and the pattern of substitution along the human genome one of the most potentially influential mutational bias that it talks about is the recombination associated process which is called gc biased gene conversion so it's basically uh, you know a, G, a recombination pattern which is formed at the end and why is it important to study because uh, you know it acts as, a, as one of the driver of human evolution and uh, um in situations like natural selection being acted upon when you're tra- trying to study the mutation rates and everything these are favorable to promoting those deleterious alleles okay so basically as it also says the g bgc results from a slight preference for gc alleles in the mismatch repair machinery and has the potential to promote the maintenance of those deleterious alleles right uh, so so see at this level you need not to go into details of the entire mechanism but just the understanding that this is one of the good example of how mutational biases could lead to human genomic evolution basically this action this uh, recombination mechanism of gbgc is widespread in human populations and also across different species which are closely related to humans as well as different uh, other um, animal species this genome wide modeling of gbgc has actually helped out understand how closely related species for humans like human and chimpanzees the differences in human genome is attributed to gbgc after a, you know a, a mass level genome wide modeling has been done for this specific loci or specific gene and these differences does attribute that one good example of mutational bias being gbgc has actually a cause and effect sort of relation in bringing out the changes in human genome right yeah 
Furthermore, the second, uh, the next parameter that they are trying to discuss here is regarding the structural variation. Whether uh, uh, structural variation are having any function, functional impact on the expression of the human genome, or uh, in of not just the human genome but also of the closely related species of humans. So when uh, initially when you were trying to study the you know when there was genome mapping there was gene sequencing done a lot of difference was observed in terms of the total number of SNPs total number of insertion deletions and uh, structural variants uh, of a uh, uh, genome of hominin of ancient like antique hominin plus versus of the humans of the contemporary humans so differences does show that over the period of time these structural variations have been accumulated right so if this are structural variants i if this are snps i there have been um, differences in the entire genome being observed so definitely the course of evolution had something which which led to these differences um, a lot of uh, you know contemporary researchers will talk about snps and their associations with disease related outcomes but very few comparatively very few researchers is, is talking with respect to these structural variants like insertion deletions and everything so these structural variants are also having a significant role in bringing out the uh, genomic evolution but dirt of literature makes it you know a um, um, little left with the question mark furthermore if all these insertion deletions are studied at a macro picture at the population level then it will be more evident that they have uh, they are having the association with the disease related outcomes or uh, you know having a greater influence on the recent human evolution as compared to even SNPs the single included polymorphisms indeed many human and population specific structural variants have been tied to human specific phenotypes uh, example they are talking about uh, androgen receptor gene and it being responsible for the lack of penile spines in humans right so there are many uh, similar factors which are responsible for phenotypic expressions being modified because of these structural variants and uh, in spite of these potential importance of insertion deletion structural variants new genes to phenotypic differences between human individuals and between closely related species they have received considerably less attention in evolutionary modeling and testing for association with disease than the snps so this also creates a you know scope of research area for people who are interested in for furthermore researchers who are interested in um, human genome studies now one uh, very important question that we are left with is how efficiently are we connected uh, are we connecting the human specific genome changes to the phenotypes so of course anything that we start with goes um, from your phenotypic expression right any disease related outcome any um, you know at a macro picture these are the phenotypes that we take into account and then we delve deeply into the genomic uh, understanding of it so sequencing the genomes of thousands of humans several archaic humans and our closest great uh, great ape uh, relatives have revealed a thousands of loci of the human genome which have experienced and accelerated the evolution on the human lineage and hundred more with the signatures of recent positive selection although every single mutation every single association with the phenotype or you know having every single phenotype having a predisposed genotype a clear cut understanding to be made is quite difficult but uh, with the human genome projects human sequ with genome sequencing and mapping you know things have been clearer but few still could not be delineated because of three uh, major factors that author mentions the first obstacle is regarding a vast majority of the regions which are having which are governed by the known coding uh, they are called as the non coding regions 
and they are having minimal functional annotations. So therefore, it's quite um, difficult to you know study those expressions in that context. Second is most of the human specific traits have complex genetic architectures in which many coding and non coding loci influence the phenotype. So exact cause and effect relation is again difficult to be delineated because of a lot of complexities in the entire uh, architecture of it. The third reason is the appropriate model systems in which to test the potential effects of mutations are not available for many phenotypes and it is challenging to, bar, to test the variants in a high throughput manner in the available systems. Right? So all these three factors are uh, you know, uh, significantly saying that it's quite tough to delineate what exactly is the genetic predisposition of a given phenotypic expression but we cannot still deny that uh, any phenotypic expression is not having any genotypic predisposition to it perhaps it could be further elevated or reduced down because of the environmental reasons environmental factors affecting it or any other confounding factors hereditary nature or anything else but um, that association could not be simply negated over the past 10 years, these genome-wide association studies have identified hundreds of variants which are associated with the complex diseases. As I was talking, a larger database is being created which could be referred to in studying to any rare form of disease, any rare form of phenotypic expression. These studies provide insight into the functions which are encoded in specific regions of the genome that can inform the evolutionary questions. Furthermore, this uh, article does end saying, uh, you know, regarding the technology, definitely technology is a big question, but um, merely saying technology is not um, up to the mark is also not correct because we have technologies which are very, you know, strong enough. Like, for example, we have stem cell therapies, we have uh, um, reporter essays, we have CRISPR gene editing, we have lot many. Um, you know, at the level of uh, statistics, we have genetic modeling, genetic models being framed out to study these expressions and these mechanisms of the genes uh, in, in human context specifically. So um, technology does have a stronger role to be played um, in studying the evolutionary course of human genome. Right, so this is about it. Um, I think this uh, article has given a lot many clearer understanding of what are different factors that have played so far in uh, framing out the evolutionary course of human genome and along with that um, studying uh, its association or its more contemporary day relevance um, for example in terms of its uh, sequencing mapping along with that its uh, um, in understanding of etiology of human diseases also in terms of studying human origins or the genetic origins of the entire human biology all those evolutionary frameworks are um, very well delineated but also a lot needs still to be done okay so i would end the lecture here if you have any questions any queries feel free to ask thank you